on par with the cultural and historical significance of such events as the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the first time a human stepped foot on the moon, and the day Andrew Hemrich brewed the first batch of Rainier beer is the Dark Room and Beers and Cameras photography meetup in Joshua Tree National Park. With a wonderful turnout, it was awesome meeting other like-minded people and talking all things photography. Hell, even a homeless man made an appearance. I got to meet a lot of people who I've been chatting with via the internet for the past two years, so it was great being able to put a face to the names of many. And who better to bring you a video about a film photography meetup than the wonderful folks over at Squarespace. So yes, thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So I took this trip to LA for the meetup and it was absolutely awesome. Big thanks to Beers and Cameras and The Dark Room for putting it on. You guys did a fantastic job of organizing everything and bringing everybody together. So thank you to you guys for making this happen. While I was in LA, I was staying with Raphael and Kat and their dog Milo, of course, who you guys all saw in my previous video. So big thank you to those guys for providing the hospitality and being so generous and letting me stay there. And then while we were in Joshua Tree, we met up with Chris Chu, who I'm sure many of you are familiar with as well. He was in my last video also. And yeah, we all hung out, had a great time. All of their Instagrams will be in the description of this video, including Milo's. That's the real incentive here, let's be honest. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, all their Instagrams will be in the description. If you want to go follow them, all awesome photographers, definitely go do so. But yeah, the first couple of days was the, was the Joshua Tree trip. And then we had a couple of days after we got back from Joshua Tree, just hanging out in LA, uh, messing around and shooting some photos. So I'm kind of combining it all into this one recap video. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's jump into it. After a few months of cold, rainy, overcast days in Washington, it felt good to wake up in a warm and sunny Los Angeles, California. Taking little trips like these is always a good reset for me. It breaks me out of my usual routines and allows me to clear my head a bit. So I was very much looking forward to spending the next few days hanging out in a different state with fellow photographers. On my previous visits to LA, I had never been outside the city. So on our drive east to Joshua Tree, I was thoroughly intrigued by the landscapes and scenery. Now I know what you're thinking, intriguing landscapes and scenery, it's the desert. There's no landscapes and no scenery. Well, I had the same predisposition too before I started exploring Eastern Washington. Turns out these rural desert lands provide some of the most interesting subjects and compositions. I'm also a bit obsessed with the American frontier. So being in a geography like this is something I thoroughly enjoy. Plus, there's something about that California desert light that just hits different. The first event of the meetup is this evening, and I of course must pregame with a delightful Rocky Mountain Sunday. The Red Dog Saloon in Pioneer Town. If that's not the most inviting name for an establishment, I don't know what is. I say that primarily because the word saloon turns me on. Anyway, what better way to spend the first night buzzed at a saloon with a bunch of photography nerds? We woke up the next morning, loaded our cameras, and headed to the National Park. This was my first time in Joshua Tree, so the rock formations took me by surprise. The beauty of this place cannot be overstated. We linked up with the rest of the crew at Hidden Valley Nature Trail to hang and shoot. I loaded a roll of Cinestill XX into my Pentax 672 to shoot some portraits of the fellow photographers. For some reason, I've been way more interested in shooting pictures of people recently 
than I have of landscapes or everyday scenes. And I've been particularly enjoying shooting portraits on black and white. It's hard to beat the rendition of that 105 lens. However, I don't think my portraits hold a candle to these shot by Raphael on his Mamiya C330 with Fuji NPS-160. He was shooting on-camera flash during the day and the results are absolutely incredible. Now, I of course had to grab a few landscapes while at Joshua Tree, so I threw some Ektar in the Pentax and began walking the loop around the nature trail. I'm not particularly stoked on the compositions of these images, but I am stoked on the color rendition. Ektar is definitely a great stock to use while at J Tree. After wrapping up the national park, the homeless man showed me the apparently elite way of carrying expensive cameras on your person. The dangle on the dome method, which I can concur is quite pleasant. The gang headed on down to the Joshua Tree Saloon for some food and a few beverages. Raphael was back at it with his Mamiya C330 and on-camera flash, this time with Portra 400 NC. It was time to say goodbye to all the new friends and put a stamp on the meetup as we were heading back to the city that evening. I intended on making a big, extravagant video from the trip to Joshua Tree, but found myself enjoying the company and conversation of others instead, which I much prefer. As much as the meetup was threaded together by photography, it was really the gathering of quality humans that made it special, and I'm grateful to have been a part of it. On the way out of town, we drove past an old school liquor store with some neon lights, which of course, as a film photographer, would have been a sin not to photograph. I should have had Raphael move the car though. The next day, Raphael took me to the Sunday morning cars and coffee meetup at Griffith Park. I went through a bit of a car phase in high school, but since then my engagement in the culture has subsided. For many, the car scene holds equivalent weight as the photography scene holds for me, and it's a joy meeting people who live and breathe everything automotive. I won't try to pretend like I know what the hell is going on in the automotive culture these days, but it was a lovely experience walking around and capturing some of the people and their vehicles.
Towards the end of the meet, I saw a woman who appeared to be straight out of the 80s. Or is it 70s? I don't know, I'm pretty bad with fashion eras, but either way, she had a cool outfit on and a rad hairdo. So I asked to grab a portrait. I also took a portrait of a gentleman who was selling custom keychain license plates. I had to represent the lockup gang, of course. To wrap up the car meet, I snagged a few photos of this rat rod that had some modifications that I very much approved of. These are probably my favorite images from the meetup. Now, while in LA, I believe it to be mandatory to watch the sunset behind the Pacific Ocean. Raphael and I headed out to Malibu to do just that. Or so we thought. Turns out the last 36 hours of my trip were plagued with clouds and rain, but that didn't stop us from shooting a couple of rolls while we were out there. Got it. This is, uh, this is what happens when a Washington guy comes to California and spends two days in dry desert heat. They're looking good out here. It looks like I just brought a body out to Malibu and threw it in the ocean. Feeling good, looking better. I opted to take my final shot at the beach on Raphael's M6. And I'm not gonna lie, that shutter sound alone might be worth the price tag. Alright, All right. how did that sound? Well, I might be uh, four grand in the hole after hearing that, so it sounded pretty damn good. Until next time, SoCal, thanks for having me. All right, everyone, that wraps up the Los Angeles Joshua Tree Trip for the Dark Room and Beers and Cameras Photography Meetup. I had an absolute blast. Very glad I decided to come down last minute. And moving forward, I definitely want to prioritize coming to more events in more locations and meeting more photographers in the community because it was incredibly refreshing for me being surrounded by people who are as passionate about photography as I am. It's not something that I get on a day-to-day -day basis up here in Washington. So yeah, I'm eager to come to more events and meet more members of the community. Other than that, I got a lot of videos coming out in the next six months, pretty much one every weekend. So you'll be seeing a lot of my face, unfortunately, but hopefully you can find a creative way or two to cope with that. Yeah. Other than that, I'll see you when I see you. And lastly, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, which is of course the film photography YouTuber overlord. 
Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for almost five years now. I host two websites with them, both my personal portfolio and my wedding films website. It's a powerful all-in-one tool that lets you create a professional website, market your business, host a portfolio, sell products, and so much more. Squarespace has a ton of aesthetic templates to choose from, and editing the contents of your site could not be simpler. The e-commerce integration allows you to get your business off the ground quickly and easily with tools like inventory management, a simple checkout process, and secure payments. The customer service is responsive and helpful as well. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash Bray, or use code Bray at checkout to receive 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The link and information is in the description below.